This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. It is the latest in the fight against COVID-19. Pfizer is expected to give the green light to start shipping COVID-19 vaccines out for children ages 5 to 11. It already has a recommendation of emergency use authorization from the FDA's vaccine advisors, as well as official emergency use authorization from the FDA. The CDC's vaccine advisors are set to vote by the end of the day Tuesday, and then the CDC director is expected to officially recommend it. Kids 5 to 11 could be able to get their COVID vaccine by the end of this week. We'll, of course, keep you posted as soon as that vote happens. Moderna's push to get its COVID vaccine approved for teens is on hold, at least for now. The company says the Food and Drug Administration needs more time to study the vaccine for children ages 12 to 17. The review may not be done until before January. Moderna says the agency wants more time to study the risk of myocarditis in children, which is the inflammation of the heart muscle. Now to the latest COVID-19 case counts here in the territory. According to the latest numbers from the VI Department of Health, 89 people are currently testing positive for COVID-19 territory-wide. Most of those cases are coming out of St. Croix, which is still seeing the highest numbers with 82 active cases on the island right now. There are seven in St. Thomas and still no active cases on St. John. The world has reached a grim milestone. According to data from NBC News and John Hopkins, more than 5 million people have died from coronavirus across the globe. In the U.S., nearly 750,000 people have died from COVID-19. Our USBI News' Haley Potter recently caught up with one man who is battling COVID-19 right now to hear his message to the community. And boom, that hits me, and it takes me as close to death, really, in terms of how I was feeling than anything I've ever dealt with. Adrian Ewing is battling a severe case of COVID-19. He has an underlying condition and says he knows if it wasn't for the vaccine, he wouldn't be alive right now. His message to the community is simple. The pandemic is no joke. I got vaccinated and then I got lax, just like so many people will do. Get vaccinated and even though you are vaccinated and think you're safe, wear a mask. That's super important. This comes the same day the world has faced a grim milestone. More than 5 million people across the globe have died because of COVID-19. It's almost overwhelming to think that there have been that many deaths and so many more cases. Epidemiologist Dr. Becky Dawson says this is the gut-wrenching reminder that we're still in the middle of a pandemic and that we're in charge of our personal and community's health. The vaccine is key thinking about getting your kids vaccinated as the vaccine becomes available for children. Additionally, you know, continuing to mask, continuing to wash our hands well, and then not going to work or the grocery store or to school or to some sort of social event when you're sick. She thinks there will be a lot of sickness in the winter between the flu and COVID-19, but sees hope for the spring. And outdoor activities for new research for, you know, different treatments. You know, hopefully the Merck pill will be available um, as we head into 2022. So I think there are things to look forward to, but I think it really is going to depend on people's behaviors. Those same behaviors that Ewing begs the community to follow. Let's get out of the woods on this thing, and then we can go to a place where we don't have to wear masks, we don't have to worry about vaccines, we don't have to worry about boosters. I know that's where all of us want to be at. Haley Potter, USVI News. Dr. Dawson tells us even though she encourages anyone eligible to get their booster shot right now to get one, but right now she's more concerned about people who did not get their first dose of the COVID vaccine. On St. Thomas, dozens of kids celebrated Halloween this year with costumes and a friendly competition. They got their fishing lines out for a Halloween kids fishing tournament. The Virgin Islands Game Fishing Club hosted the event at the American Yacht Harbor Marina. The group was made up of kids ages 14 and under who fished either in the morning or the afternoon while spreading it out to keep the event COVID safe. The event was free and the junior anglers also got backpacks, buckets, hand lines and bait. And of course, there were prizes afterwards as too. Looks like a lot of fun. COP26, as the name suggests, is the 26th time world leaders have met to try to reduce global warming. 
And yet, many say the world is still careening toward a climate catastrophe, and the leaders are being begged to do more. So we wanted to take a look at what's at stake if world leaders fail to act now. Reporter Mark Phillips has long documented the perils of climate change. The official soundtrack of this conference may be the Scottish Pipes, but the unofficial one is the sound of a ticking clock. Time is running out, the gathering of 120 world leaders was told, on efforts to avoid the worst catastrophes of climate change. What we've seen so far, the melting polar ice, the rising waters, the severe storms, the heat, these are just a taste of what unchecked global warming can bring. Four degrees, and we say goodbye to whole cities. Miami, Alexandria, Shanghai, all lost beneath the waves. A little history lesson is useful here. When delegates at the Paris conference six years ago celebrated the landmark agreement there, it was on the understanding that each country would follow up with individual plans to cut their greenhouse gas emissions. The goal was to limit global warming to under 2 degrees Celsius, 3.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Limiting the rise to 1.5 degrees C was even better. They haven't done that. Which may be why protesters here supplied their own pipe band soundtrack, complete with caricatures of some of the leaders. The commitment to deeper carbon cuts this conference was supposed to produce hasn't happened. And this was the only presence in Glasgow of Chinese President Xi. The scientific calculation is that greenhouse gas emissions need to be cut by half by the end of the decade. But as things stand now, they're still set to rise. Two other big polluters, China and Russia, whose heads of state chose not to attend this year's COP summit. Those countries, as well as India, are responsible for more than half of the world's emissions. Yet they've rejected the 2050 goal to zero out global carbon emissions. American Airlines canceled another 250 flights on Monday as it deals with staffing shortages and weather issues, which disrupted schedules for days. Since Friday, more than 2,000 flights have been canceled. So what are your rights if your flight is canceled or delayed? Our USVI News' Kristen Allen has more from one travel expert who breaks down what you may be entitled to if your flight gets interrupted. Another airline canceling flights. This time it was American Airlines, canceling more than 2,000 flights over the past four days, triggering long lines and angering passengers. Pre-pandemic, this was pretty unheard of, um, but it feels like the new normal until we kind of get to a, a, a steady level of supply and demand. American blaming weather and staffing shortages. So what should you do if your flight is canceled or delayed? Every airline has different policies, but travel expert Willis Orlando says you may be eligible for a refund. Know your rights. Know that if the airline significantly delays or cancels your flight, you are entitled to a cash refund. So if they offer you a voucher, for example, you don't need to take that. This also applies if you're already in transit and the second leg of your trip is canceled. Check your flight status frequently. And experts say be proactive and find a flight your airline can rebook for you. If you come to the table with good information, with an alternative for them, a solution prepared for them, they very often will love to just take the easy solution and move you forward. Airlines have less personnel than they did going into the pandemic. Transportation Department data show airlines as an entire industry are about 7,000 people smaller than they were in 2019. Most major airlines laid off or furloughed thousands of employees early in the pandemic and have been hiring back, but it's been a slow and steady process. Kristen Allen, USVI News. American Airlines says help is on the way. 1,800 flight attendants should be back on the job on Monday. American, of course, isn't the only airline facing staffing issues. You'll remember Southwest Airlines had a similar issue just three weeks ago when it had to cancel 2,000 flights, blaming air traffic control issues. And back in August, Spirit Airlines canceled hundreds of flights on a single day.